Dale Irish, what's going on? Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. Hey, we're talking boats again today. This is part three of the full bellows replacement project. Part two is scrolling above. Definitely check that out if you haven't seen it. Then come right back to here. We'll pick up right where we left off and continue the project. Let's get started. DIYers, here we are at the Craftsman Workstation. And again, this is part three of our bell housing, our bellows and shift cable and additional parts rebuild project. To a closer look, here is the inner side or back side of our bell housing where the exhaust bellow connects to, the U-joint bellow connects to, and the water hose connects to. And DIYers, in part two, I was not planning on removing the water tube or water hose fitting, which is this right here. However, the more I thought about it, why wouldn't I? So with that thought, we are going to start part three with removing that water hose fitting. And a quick recap where we've been to get to this point. This is our shift cable bellow, our large U-joint bellow, and our exhaust bellow. And there is our really badly aged and dry rotted water hose or water tube and here is the water tube that goes through the actual transom and hull of the boat here is the back side or shift cable fitting and the brand new one is right there as well as a brand new shift cable and our shift shaft and lever up here and to the schematics as you can see with the bell housing Coming up to number three, that is the water hose fitting that we are going to replace. And then 18 is just a clamp, and then 17 is the hose, and 18 is an additional clamp. And what I had to do was go to the store and purchase a 1 and 1 16th inch deep socket. And that is going to fit directly over the water hose fitting. I have now repositioned the camera. What I'll do next is use some PB Blaster and spray the water hose fitting. And I'll allow this to sit for about 20 minutes. Maybe 30. DIYers back at it. I allowed that PB blaster to soak into that fitting for about 25 minutes. And again, one and one sixteenths deep socket, as you can see here. Down below in the comment section, as well as description section, will be a link on where to purchase this, as well as the PB blaster. From here, I've got my Craftsman Impact Gun. And what I'm going to do try to give you a decent view of this, is carefully remove that fitting by applying some friendly jolts with this impact. Check that out. What we'll do now is clean up this entire fitting as well as the entire bell housing. I just have a regular piece of paper towel, and again, I'm just going to clean the fitting. We are actually going to use lacquer thinner to clean the fitting and the entire bell housing, both inner and outer, and also including all of the mating surfaces for the bellows. Again, exhaust, U-joint, and shift cable. And as far as the lacquer thinner, again, down below in the comment section as well as description section is a link on where to purchase this lacquer thinner. DORs, this is what I highly recommend using. And what it's going to do is allow you to break up any of the remaining gasket sealant and bellow adhesive that's stuck to the housing. You want 100% of that removed before moving on. And this is only one quart. It was about $12. Another piece of paper towel, and I'll just dab a little bit of lacquer thinner on it. And as you can see here, and again, we're just going to clean as much of this off as we possibly can. And I'm also going to grab a wire brush. I'm going to use the brass brush as opposed to the steel and basically work it in all the thread and remove any remaining perfect seal or gasket maker that was previously applied to the thread off there. And after I do this, I'm going to move to the inner housing and clean everything off. Let me show you a closer view inside and what we have to remove. To a closer view, we'll start with the exhaust bellow housing here. And still, just a bunch of grime build up there. We need to remove all of that because if we don't, the new bellow is not going to be able to create a perfect watertight seal. And then off to the U-joint bellow, as you can see here, there's still a lot of previous bellow adhesive. We have to remove all of that as well as inside. All this sticky stuff right here has to come out of there. Next, I grab the 180 grit sandpaper. And again, I'm just going to work all of that corrosion off of the outer housing to allow that bellow to create a watertight seal. And don't get anything more gritty than 180. Once 
One thing I'm also doing is going inside the insert where the water tube fitting secures into and cleaning the internal thread with, again, a brass brush. At this point, I'm using a little pick tool to get inside that little groove there. And just be careful, you don't want to scratch things that you're not supposed to. But again, this is really easy to get that inner indent or gap clean of all previous bellow adhesive. I'm making significant progress as I clean this entire bell housing. Again, with the pick tool, I want to ensure that I'm getting all of the previous corrosion out of this little machine cut where the water tube o-ring will go. As you can see, there is some falling out, out to the inner side. Just break that up, get all that out of there. So when it comes time to insert the brand new O-ring, it will be able to create that watertight seal. What I'll do next is I will shift the bell housing to the side and I am going to clean the water tube. And I've got two bolts that help secure the cover to the water tube. And I'm going to remove the old fitting, set that aside, and I'm going to clean this tube with lacquer thinner. And DIYers, that's probably the cleanest I'm going to get this water tube. Again, I'm going to use the original or old water tube because we couldn't get a new one. And we are going to keep the two bolts that secure the cover in place, but we are going to replace this with a brand new cover, as well as new fitting. I'll set that aside, and I want to give you a better close-up of the bell housing. Now to a close-up, I did my absolute best to remove as much of that old bellow adhesive as possible, as you can see. And again, when it comes time to this inner machine cutout for the O-ring for the water tube, you just want to remove any of that grime as shown here. See that? Get that out of there. Next to a close-up view of the inner portion or back portion of the bell housing. And again, I did my best to remove as much of the corrosion as possible. And I used sandpaper, again, 180 grit, and I only used it on the outer portion of the housing. I did not use it on the inner portion. There's no need to do that. Just lacquer thinner will do. However, the outer portion of the housings are where the bulk of the adhesive is. And again, you've got to remove that. Taking a step back, what we will do is transition back to the boat and we will use that lacquer thinner to clean up the additional portions where the bellows will connect to inside the gimbal ring and transom. Back in the garage to the boat and the gimbal ring and transom as shown here. Coming inside, we'll start with the bottom housing. That's where the exhaust bellow connects to. We'll clean that with sandpaper and lacquer thinner. And we'll hop up to the large one. Again, the U-joint bellows. We'll clean the outer surface of this as well. And this one's not that bad. Check that out. But again, we'll clean it up with sandpaper and lacquer thinner. And then we'll attack the shift cable housing where the shift cable bellow secures to. And this one looks like the most corroded. We'll start with 180 grit sandpaper and sand all this away and then lacquer thinner it clean. Again, 180 grit sandpaper as shown here. Now to a close up in DIYs, I'm pretty satisfied with the cleanup process and how much we got off as far as the old bellow adhesive. What I'm going to do now, surprisingly, is I'm going to remove all that grease. And for those of you that are staying or sticking with the original or standard greasable gimbal bearing, this is for you. I'm going to show you how to remove that seal and install a brand new one. However, for all of you that are going away from the standard or traditional gimbal bearing that is greasable and making the transition to the sealed gimbal bearing, which includes us, you don't actually have to remove that grease seal. In fact, you can just leave it as is because again, the already greased and sealed gimbal bearing will literally never require grease. In addition, you will close the grease hole and feed off. As you can see here, this is the hole that feeds the grease inside the gimbal bearing and all around here and is held in place by that seal. And here is the shaft that the grease goes through and to the outer side, here is the grease port right there where you hook up the grease gun and feed that grease into the system. And in our case with the sealed gimbal bearing, guess what? We are going to remove that fitting and install a set screw which will close off the entire grease hole channel that feeds grease to the inner cavity there where the gimbal bearing is. Again, because ours is already greased and sealed and will literally no longer ever require grease. But again, from here, we'll clean that up and remove that seal. And really no easy way to do this. I mean, it's just a bunch of grease and just carefully remove as much of it as you can without making a huge mess. And it comes out in clumps, as you can see here. Have a trash bag right next to you.
Now to a close up and I removed as much of that grease as I possibly could, but there is still a bit in there, but that's okay. And at this stage of the project, I wanna talk about this insert and the important design that goes into it. And as you can see, we'll start with the outer cavity here closest to us, and that is machine cut for your gimbal bearing. And if you come in here, you'll notice a stopping point. So what you do is you grab the proper install tool to drive your gimbal bearing into that cavity until it is flush with the stopping point back here. And as you move further in, it makes a beveled up cut and into a smaller diameter hole, which is specifically designed for your grease seal as shown here. And I recommend at this point taking a couple photos because when it comes time to install the brand new grease seal, well, you want to make sure you install it properly and in the right position. As you see here, this is basically the open end and the opposite side is a closed end. And you'll see that here shortly. In addition, when it comes time to use that tool to install your grease seal, you'll hammer it in all the way until the seal itself or carrier becomes flush with the back stopping point shown here. However, the stopping point for your seal is behind it. In addition, you've got a little machine cut out here, and that's what feeds grease to this chamber or cavity here. And you can use a flathead screwdriver or a very small needle nose like type pliers to carefully insert it in there and bend this portion of the carrier up to allow you to get a good grip of it to pull it out because puller jaws aren't really the best method for removing this seal. It's pretty tough to grab a hold of. And let me scroll in here, give you a better view. When you insert your puller jaws to the back end of that carrier, the inner cavity or bore is much larger than this cutout right here. And again, it makes it extremely difficult to get puller jaws to grip on the back side of the seal to pull it out. I'm going to start with a fine tip flathead screwdriver. I've also got a much larger one. I may start with that one. And to protect the inner housing from scratches, gouges, or scoring, I'm going to apply a small piece of rubber. And I will see if the large screwdriver can go in that hole. And if it can, that would be nice. And it's kind of in there, so what I'll do is position the rubber accordingly to again protect the housing from scratches or scoring and just kind of apply some upward pressure. And you can start to see the outer race bending up. From here, I'll just continue to carefully work around or away from that hole. To make it easier to pull that seal out. To a close up, again, the purpose is to bend the bottom portion of that seal carrier upward. And from here, we'll transition to the next tool. Next, just a standard pair of locking pliers or vice grips and I'll Insert the top end here inside the seal to the back edge and lock it on. And from here, I can carefully kind of pull down on it. There we go, DIYers. That popped out pretty quickly. Here's where I grabbed a hold of the back end. And that's it. So you'll notice I bent that portion up and then I continued to attack that bent up portion of the seal by inserting the clamp as shown here. And that is how it was in. So I came in and just continued to pull up and wiggle it out. Coming inside to a closer look and as you can see, there is the cavity or inner housing with the seal removed. And as I was talking about with the gimbal bearing, it has a stopping point. And then when you shift inward to the seal cavity, it also has a stopping point. So when it comes time to install the brand new seal, you use that tool to hammer it in until it's flush with that stopping point. And at that point, your seal is fully installed and secured in place. Check that out. come inside the housing and as I mentioned the stopping point with the gimbal bearing you also have the stopping point for your oil seal so from here we are going to clean up this inner housing and install the new seal and a quick view of the inner housing or cavity cleaned up of the grease I didn't go too far in that hole that's all I did all right, DIYers at the Crescent workstation and again we're going to show you how to install your gimbal bearing grease seal and right down there is the tool and the adapter that goes on that long rod. And from here, let's take a closer look of the seal. To a closer look, and here is the new seal. There is the old seal. Again, here's the new seal. There's the part number. The link will be down below on where to purchase this. Here's the inner portion of the seal or the cup portion. And that is the portion that faces outward toward you or the outdrive engine as shown there. And from here, what we'll do is open that up. I now have the seal unpackaged and I've got the driver tool and driver rod. Same rod that you use to align your engine as well as drive your new gimbal bearing into the housing. And this is perfectly designed to fit inside that cup portion of the seal. 
and I'm going to apply just a little bit of high performance extreme grease, which I'll have a link down below in the comment section as well as description section on where to purchase this. So what do you think? Let's head out to the boat and get this installed. To the back of the boat where the transom is, let's go inside the gimbal bearing housing where the gimbal bearing will be installed as well as the grease seal. As you can see, we've cleaned it up pretty good. We will reposition the camera and get started. With the camera repositioned, I've grabbed the adapter and grease seal. And again, the way this is designed and machine cut is to allow this inner rubber seal to fit inside this gap here. And then this portion to go through here. And it is kind of a tight fit and that's a good thing, but press this all the way flush until the tool itself is 100% in position and flush with the backside here. And from here, we can carefully insert it into the housing. However, you may find it easier to insert this seal by hand and then insert that tool to drive it in. What I'll do now is grease the outer edge of the grease seal. And all I'm using is Quicksilver High Performance Extreme Grease. And I've got some on my finger. All I'll do again is lubricate that outer carrier. Allow it to shift down into that housing and in place a little easier. And from here, do your absolute best to insert the seal as straight as possible prior to grabbing that driving rod and adapter to hammer it in. Once you feel comfortable that that seal is properly centered, grab your adapter and grab your driving rod. Slide that in and carefully slide it down and into the seal. And DIYers from here, I've got a two pound Tecton hammer and I'm going to hammer that in place. Now to a closer look and DIYers, most important thing when driving this in place, again, make sure it is straight. In the event that it gets offset, apply just a little bit of pressure in the portion that's further toward you to again, center that to your best ability when driving that seal in. And as you hammer that rod, it has a unique sound when you hit it before the seal makes contact with that back stopping point. And when that seal finally gets into position and flush with that back stopping point, the sound the hammer makes on the rod is a little different. So you will know when that seal is properly placed and all the way flush with the back stopping point behind it. Taking a step back, the next thing we will install and hammer in that housing is the gimbal bearing. Right now it's in the freezer, which helps it shrink just ever so slightly in diameter. However, what I'll do first is apply some Quicksilver High Performance Extreme Grease on that rubber seal to kind of lubricate it just a little bit. Because again, your U-joint shaft goes through here and spins at an incredibly high speed. So I want the back side and front side of this rubber seal lubricated. But again, it's not going to have that large amount or buildup of grease that it previously had. And I feel pretty comfortable with that. Again, the back side, front side, and inner portion that the yoke shaft slides into and rotates in. In addition, some people do this, some people don't. I'm grabbing just a tiny bit of grease and I'm going to grease the inner housing that the new gimbal bearing will go into. Again, this is going to help it shift inside this cavity or housing just a bit easier. Do not overdo this because again, your new gimbal bearing does not require grease. Brand new lubricated and sealed gimbal bearing in hand, very cold, basically frozen. It was in the freezer for several hours. And again, two extremely important items to take into consideration before positioning this in the housing. Number one, the yellow dot has to be at the 10 o'clock position. And number two, the opening or gap on the rotational inner race must be aligned with your grease hole per the service bulletin and manual. So again, be ever so careful as you install this. Nine o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock here, 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock. Do your best to get it in as straight as possible. From here, I will grab the adapter specifically machine cut and designed for your gimbal bearing and slide that in place. Now to the driver rod. As shown here. And I'll shift the camera just a bit and I will begin hammering this in with my two pound Tecton hammer.
making huge progress and I'm very happy that that went well. That gimbal bearing is properly seated in the housing and you will notice with the driver rod I never cut a hole in the rod itself or alignment tool and the purpose of that again is to get the proper alignment for your gimbal bearing and then drill the hole for your adapter. However, for some odd reason, my driver tool portion right here was too big to fit through the gimbal bearing and tool itself, which I found that odd because it's supposed to. However, again, I did not need to drill. And in addition, the last couple hits, I ensured that this adapter tool or driver tool was properly positioned on the gimbal bearing and I used a small block of two x four to hammer it in. You do not want to hammer that gimbal bearing in by use of just the 2x4 because you could damage the inner carrier here and you definitely do not want that. And again, since I've got everything apart right now, I didn't have to do all those measurements that require a hole to be cut in this large heavy rod. However, since I'm doing it this way, you must ensure that again, 10 o'clock for the yellow dot and the opening in the rotational inner race is lined up with the grease hole. And when the bearing is properly seated against the back stopping point, there must be one eighth inch of that inner bore accessible. And as you hammer this in, just like the grease seal, the hammer makes a unique sound when the bearing is not flush with the back stopping point. Once it gets flush with that back stopping point, the sound that the hammer makes on the driver rod and tool changes. You will know when this is flush with the back stopping point. Now to a close up of the inner housing and bearing. As you can see, it's a little sweaty because it was frozen. And this portion right here, this inner bore, must be 1 8 inch available or showing after you install this gimbal bearing flush with the back stopping point in there. Not this housing, not the next step up, but the third step up where I've got those grooves that the previous gimbal bearing made as it came out. So again, 1 8 inch must be accessible. So if you do not have 1 8 inch accessible, you are not flush with the back stopping point and your gimbal bearing must continue to be driven in until it meets that back stopping point. Taking a step back, now we will transition to the starboard side. We are going to remove that grease fitting and install the brand new set screw. From here, I've got the camera repositioned on starboard side. Again, here is the grease port fitting and you've got a plastic cap. Just carefully pull that off and it exposes your grease port and just carefully pull this off as you see here. Set that aside. And in our case, a 5 16 socket fits perfectly on that grease fitting. And it's not that tight, which is nice. And there is the grease fitting right there. Grab a paper towel, clean up that little insert slightly. Not too dirty. Now to the brand new set screw. Again, here's the part number and we will remove it from the packaging. New set screw is out of the packaging. This is a security set screw and I'll show you what I mean by that. If you grab your normal T20, you can see that there is no hole. It's a solid piece or bit. And the T20 security has a hole in it as you see there. Because again, this is a security set screw and it has an internal pin. Check that out. And in order to screw this in, you have to have the T20 security bit with that hole in it. And they add this security screw to alleviate mechanics down the road from just assuming that you have a grease fitting and attempting to add grease to the system. Next, the service bulletin and manual state that you need to apply perfect seal or gasket sealing. In our case, we're using this right here, which believe it or not, is the exact same product that we applied to the drive shaft oil seals during the outdrive upper unit rebuild. And I applied just a little bit in the thread. And again, that is going to help create an amazing watertight seal to not allow any of the grease to come out into the water, as well as not allow any water to get inside the passageway and make its way into the gimbal bearing housing. That would cause havoc. And just ensure that you are not cross-threading the set screw into the transom and you want it snug, but do not over tighten it. And this gasket sealant again will create an incredible watertight seal. Now to a close-up view of the new set screw. Again, it is a security screw and you must have the proper security bit to screw that in. If you try to screw it in with something else, you're gonna damage it and that's not good. And coming back, here is the bit set that I have and down below in the comment section as well as description section will be a link on where to purchase this. As you can see, in our case, it was the T20 security bit. So definitely a good set of bits to have on hand. Taking a step back at DIYers, that is where we are going to wrap up part three. We hope you're still with us and we hope these videos are helpful. Scrolling above right now is a link to part four. We will pick up right where we left off. We hope to see you there. We still have a lot to do, including replacing the trim sender and limit switches and wiring, as well as the bellows, water tube, install the bell housing, and more. We hope this helped.
do us a favor below the video you will see that thumbs up icon click on that like the video subscribe to the channel definitely ring your youtube bell that would be very helpful to us we'd really appreciate it thanks again for watching